Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over proper traffic pattern entries and radio procedures at non-towered airports. Sadly, the NTSB preliminary report came out on the mid-air collision in Minden, Nevada back um, on the, uh, September 16th of 2024. It involved a Civil Air Patrol aircraft, a 206, and a Globe Swift aircraft, and basically they collided in the traffic pattern and unfortunately, there was a loss of life uh, for the pilot that was in the Globe Swift aircraft. Uh, so from reading the report, uh, the preliminary report, there were several takeaways that I got out of it, and I wanted to go over those. Number one, the importance of following proper traffic pattern procedures at non-tower airports. Number two, the importance of following proper radio procedures at non-towered airports. And lastly, the benefits of having ADS-B out and in in your aircraft and taking advantage of that to keep sight of traffic. In this particular situation with this accident, the Globe Swift aircraft did not have ADS-B out. And that was some of the reason for the mistake here and the tragedy. Um, but in general, um, most of our aircraft today are flying with ADS-B in and out, um, particularly for those who want to fly at um, airports in Class Charlie and Bravo airspace, uh, more above 10,000 feet in echo, etc. So the FAA regulations and recommendations at non-towered airports are um, quite extensive. The FAA offers at least four different good resources for uh, describing proper traffic pattern procedure entries, as well as for radio communications or radio operations at non-towered airports. Uh, first of all, there's the FAR 91.126, Operating Honor in the Vicinity of an Airport in Class G Airspace. Um, the Airplane Flying Handbook has a lot of good information. Um, the Advisor of the Circular 90-66C, Non-Towered Airport Flight Operations. And lastly, the AIM, Section 4-1-9, Traffic Advisory Practices at Airports Without Operating Control Towers. All of these um, FAA documents provide some very good information on how to enter a traffic pattern, um, and use proper radio communications at non-towered airports. So I'm going to discuss each one of those in a little bit in detail. Uh, we're going to look at 91.126, Section B, Ops on or in the vicinity of a Class uh, G airport. So particularly, this relates to non-towered airports. So each pilot of an airplane must make all turns of that airplane to the left unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicating the turn should be made to the right, in which case the pilot must make all turns to the right. So you can find that information out in the chart supplement. Um, if you're literally over the airport, you can look at the uh, segmented circle uh, to see which way the traffic's flowing. Uh, there's no, numerous resources to know which way the traffic pattern flows at the airport. So there's really no excuse for you entering the pattern uh, in the wrong direction. Uh, lastly, each pilot of a helicopter or a powered parachute must avoid the flow of fixed wing aircraft. Um, the Airplane Flying Handbook, very valuable resource uh, for knowing how to fly a traffic pattern. So non-towered airports traffic patterns are always entered at pattern altitude, roughly a thousand feet typically. For most airports it's a thousand feet AGL. Um, pattern entry depends upon the direction of arrival. The preferred method for entering from the downwind leg side of the pattern is to approach the pattern on a course of 45 degrees uh, to the downwind leg and join the pattern at midfield uh, pattern altitude. There are a couple of other ways to enter the traffic pattern if arrival occurs on the upwind leg. One method is to announce your intentions and cross over the midfield at least 500 feet above the pattern altitude. However, if large or turbine aircraft operate at the airport, it's best to remain 2,000 feet AGL so as not to conflict with their traffic pattern. When well clear of the pattern, roughly two miles out, the pilot should scan carefully for traffic, descend to pattern altitude via a teardrop turn to enter a 45 degree entry into the downward leg at midfield. My thoughts on that? That's fine for a high winged aircraft, not so good for a low wing aircraft because when that uh, low-wing aircraft is turning that right teardrop and descending, its uh, high wing is blocking its vision for any traffic that may be coming in on the 45-degree angle. So I think this is a perfectly good entry uh, for like a Cessna 172 or any high-wing aircraft, but not so good for a low-wing aircraft. The alternate method for entry when coming in from the upwind side um, is to cross 
the midfield at pattern altitude, carefully scanning for traffic, enunci enunciating your intentions, and then turn downwind once you cross that midfield crosswind. The technique should not be used if the pattern's busy. My thoughts again, this is ideal for the low wing aircraft. Now we've got the advisory circular 90-66C, non-towered airport flight operations. And they just, I just called out of it uh, some of the more pertinent um, pieces of information that I thought were very useful to make sure I share with you. So 8.2.1, when entering the traffic pattern at an airport without an operating control tower, inbound pilots are expected to observe other aircraft already in the pattern and to conform to the traffic pattern in use. 8.1.1, at a non-towered airport in other than instrument conditions, the FAA does not recommend that the pilot execute a straight-in approach for landing when there are other aircraft in the pattern. And then next, 9.2, fly the standard traffic pattern. Arriving aircraft should enter the airport's traffic pattern at traffic pattern altitude and avoid straight-in approaches for landing to mitigate the risk of a mid-air collision. So there's two references there referencing don't just do straight-in landings. If you're coming in on an IFR instrument approach or practice approach, that's one thing. But if you're just trying to enter the pattern and get down quick with a straight end, that's not the thing to do. I also wanted to highlight here in the picture to the right, notice the, the legs of the pattern. Uh, particularly, you have a departure leg and an upwind leg. Frequently, I hear people in the pattern saying, I'm on the upwind leg when they're really on the departure leg. So we've got a departure leg, crosswind leg, downwind leg, base leg, and then we have an upwind leg, which is off to the right in this case. So what you want to do is if you're doing a go around because there's traffic on the runway, you're going to sidestep to the right and be on the upwind leg. 90-66C, again, non-towered flight operations, um, more, more information from there. 9.5.3, on the airport's CTAF or common traffic advisory frequency, you should communicate and coordinate your aircraft intention with aircraft inbound and in the traffic pattern and announce the runway to be used the direction of flight on, on departure, or whether or not you tend to stay in the pattern. So if you're staying in the pattern, it's going to be um, Laconia traffic, or two, uh, 405 Sierra Bravo, departing runway 26, closed traffic. Uh, this includes touch and goes and stop and goes um, for landing. So if you're doing a touch and go or stop and go, but particularly touch and go, which was some of the issue with that accident that happened, remember the rule ANC, aviate, navigate, communicate. You do that touch and go as you're climbing out you should make your uh, note that you're departing runway x um, or on the on the roll or something like that so somebody knows that you're coming back up into the air to fly in the pattern again the piloting command's primary responsibility is to see and avoid the aircraft other aircraft and to help the other aircraft see and avoid his or her aircraft you should keep the lights on and the strobes on and again using good radio communication Moving on, section 11.7 .7 of the advisory circular, turning crosswind. Airplanes remaining in the pattern should not commence a turn to the crosswind leg until they're uh, past the departure end and within 300 feet below the traffic pattern altitude. 11.10, .10, landing right of way. So section 91.113 spells out the right of ways uh, when landing or flying in the pattern. Um, vigilance shall be maintained by each person operating aircraft so as to see and avoid other aircraft. When two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way, but shall not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of another aircraft, which is on final approach to land or to overtake that aircraft. Next, we have the AIM 4-1-9, Traffic Advisory Practices at Non-Towered Airports. Essential that pilots be alert and look for other traffic and exchange traffic information via the radio when approaching to barding an airport without an operating control tower. This is a particular importance since other aircraft may not have calm capabilities, or in some cases, pilots may not communicate their presence or intentions when operating into and out of such airports. So that accident that happened um, at Minden Airfield, um, that pilot did not have ADSB out. Um, so the folks in the cap plane were unable to see him on their ADSB in. Also, the Globe aircraft that was coming in. Uh, only made its intentions that it was entering the 45, never called out at 10 miles or 5 miles, etc. Um, lastly, keep in mind that um, aircraft do not necessarily need to have radios operating, particularly in Class G airspace, so you have to be alert for that situation, and that's what the aim is highlighting here. 
So to achieve the greatest degree of safety, it's essential that all radio equipped aircraft transmit receive on a common frequency identified for the purpose of the airport advisories. That's the CTAF or Unicom, and you can find it in the chart supplement. Pilots should use the correct airport name as identified appropriate aeronautical publications, like on the sectional chart supplement, um, to reduce the risk of confusion when communicating their position and their intentions and or exchanging traffic information. Into the right is a table right out of the AIM uh, manual, basically saying at these non-tower airports, you should be reporting when you're 10 miles out um, where you are relative to the airport, what your intentions are, uh, what altitude you're flying at, et cetera. Um, I recommend doing it not only at 10 miles, but at five miles. Now, here's just some more personal recommendations that I uh, suggest for safe flight in the pattern. Again, make those radio calls at 10 miles and five miles, stating your position and intentions for the airport. 10 miles to the south, inbound uh, for runway 26. Uh, make radio calls when you are on the 45 degree entry to the downwind or crossing over midfield for the pattern entry. So you've made that 10 mile call, the five mile call, as you're about to enter the pattern on the 45 or crossing midfield, make that next radio call. Again, make radio calls on all traffic legs in the pattern. I know sometimes I may be the only one in the pattern, or at least I think I'm the only one in the pattern, and I'm still making those radio calls. It may be annoying to FB, the FBO people, but it's a good idea to keep other people aware uh, what you're doing. You may not see them on, their ADS, on your ADSB in because they may not be having an ADSB out, uh, or they may not be using the radios very much. If you do have ADSB in on board your aircraft and you are having a GPS unit on board your aircraft um, or paired with your iPad, Make sure that ADSB traffic is showing up on your iPad as well as in the GPS unit. I recommend if you do have the GPS unit, we use frequently a Garmin GTN 650. I only display traffic only when I'm in the pattern versus having it cluttered up with other information about obstacles and stuff like that. If I'm in the pattern, I pretty much know where the obstacles are because I'm flying VFR at that point. So I just want to see the traffic in an uncluttered way, what altitude it's at and what direction it's coming toward me. Um, if you're using an aftermarket ADSB out um, product, make sure it is powered on. Make sure the EG, the, for example, the nav lights are on. Often these um, sky, uh, sky beacons are associated with uh, a light, uh, like the nav light control. So you've got to make sure you have the nav lights on to make that work. Uh, do not enter a runway and wait for another aircraft to exit the runway. Wait for the landing traffic to clear the runway before entering the runway for departure. You set yourself up for risk of somebody coming in uh, behind you while you're waiting on the runway and possibly causing a, a collision. After landing and clearing of a runway, uh, you're past the hold short, announce that you're clear of the runway. This will signal the waiting traffic for departure that they can now enter the runway. So those are the proper traffic entry procedures and radio operations that should be done at a non-towered airport. Hopefully this information is helpful, and if you think it's helpful, consider the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.